I could spend the whole of my presentation talking about the needs, the medical needs of this population, or even uh, stating the rationale and justifications for a program like this. And this is what I've been doing uh, the previous year uh, prior to the establishment of the program. And uh, this is what family associations have been doing for at least 10 years. So I won't be spending my time on that, but explaining about the program itself. Just for a very, very brief introduction, I will remind you of uh, this population having more physical comorbidity, more psychiatric comorbidity, and more mortality. And also, they have many difficulties um, that have a relation to their basic problems that make it difficult for them to go through the system, the health system, and get access to the medical services that the rest of the population have. So they have just a summary of them, difficulties, differentiation, uh, where their pain may be coming from or where they uh, uh, bad state be coming from, and they need a lot of routine. They have uh, many problems with uh, new settings, with new people, very many difficulties with waiting, and they have they may have different sensitivity to pain and sensory hypersensitivity. These are only a few of their characteristics that may uh, make it difficult to get uh, medical care. They, uh, appropriate medical care. So just one of many statements that justify this kind of service would be this. Accessible environments are not only due to elimination of physical barriers, but also for the elimination of communicative, social, and environmental barriers. And another one, uh, which is one of the principles that leads to this kind of services, access to the ordinary health care services and receive the care that is appropriate to their health needs in accordance to the same standard afforded to other ill persons. That were what we want with this kind of a program. In the last year, there have been a few books and guidelines telling us what should be the adaptations that the health system should, should make for this kind of population. So the final conclusive the statement would be that given the severity of the clinical picture, the high frequency of associated organic and psychiatric problems, and the difficulties of this population to express their needs and understand the outside world, they require a preferential and specific singular sanitary management. So the program is called the AMITEA, which means uh, integral medical care for the autism spectrum disorders. Okay. And there are three inclusion criteria, and that explains mainly what the program is about. The first is that uh, the person that comes, persons that are eligible for the program, have to have a diagnosis of an ASD. We don't make the diagnosis there, so people have to come with a diagnosis. The program is meant for zero to 100 years of age. So we provide a continuity of care that all guidelines uh, say we should be giving. And it is region-based. We work in a region which is sectorized, the health system, so each family has a district of uh, health care where they should go, but this is region-based, so families can come to this program irrespective of the district. And the main objective is to facilitate access to health service and coordinate all sanitary processes. So we always say we don't have any sophisticated way of dealing with physical problems. We don't have any sophisticated uh, medical test or anything that other people cannot have. We just make it possible that the patients get to the specialist that the system provides for the whole of the population. 
Some specific objectives are here. So we provide a continuity of care that we said before. We give very quick responses. So we try to make preferential needs to make them urgent and normal needs, we make them preferential. So it's like making a positive discrimination kind of uh, thing. We minimize new variables, so we do as many things as we can in our own office. We try that one specialist in each of the medical specialists always attends this person, same nurses, same doctors, same settings. We individualized the care, and uh, we promote a friendly health environment with predictive, structured, and felicitative uh, settings. What do we do in the daily uh, day? So the access is very easy. Any doctor, general doctor, family doctor, and specialist can refer the patient to our program via fax, so people doesn't have to go anywhere, and they just, the doctor sends a fax, and we contact them on the phone. We have a meeting, the program coordinator and the, mod and the medical coordinator, and we decide if this, this person needs a preferential appointment or just a regular one. And it is interviewed by a psychiatrist. We are three of us, part-time each, and we uh, obtain a first general medical and psychiatric interview. So we decide if the people is be going to be, if the person is going to be in a programmed way. People contact the program coordinator. We do the initial evaluation. We don't make the diagnosis, but we um, review all the records to conf confirm at least apparently the diagnosis and do the medical and psychiatric evaluation. We also pretend to have regular appointments with some specialties uh, like ophthalmology, gynecology, and some others. Some have, are already developed, the others are in way. So what we first evaluate uh, we do a records review, particularly about the diagnostic process to see if it seems correct or not. And then we take a comprehensive medical history, not a complete medical history, but uh, we include mainly family history with all medical, developmental, and mental health problems. We include, we determine any other medical or health conditions that are present or that may be not well attended. We put a lot of emphasis in all the factors that we think that may lead to further physical evaluations that may not have been done. And we do a complete history of milestones, signs of regression. And we pay special attention to those problems that may be physiological problems or maybe not very severe in other conditions, in other children, but may be very disturbing for this population, such as sleep problems, eating disturbances, diets, functional gastrointestinal problems, problems with vision, auditory usually are dealt with before they come, dental hygiene and problems. So we emphasize this kind of small problems that may make it very difficult for these people to live. And then we conduct a psychiatric assessment, which is not centered on the autistic problems, which are dealt in, a, in the educational places where they are in. So we pay more attention to the other symptoms that uh, were usually quite neglected. And we pay attention, we emphasize those symptoms that may be interfering or maybe impending the educational treatment or the psychological treatment uh, such as, and that, that may be a target for a psychiatric treatment. Those th symptoms we emphasize in are behaviors, inattention, hyperactivity, obsessions or compulsions, and any other psychiatric problems such, such as depressive anxiety symptoms, especially in people in transition to adolescence or late adolescence mainly, or adult life. 